I'm going to leave you all with the almost 27 year old version of Ranveer. At this stage of my life, here's my five rules for successful relationships. Rule 1. As much as bad breakups have taught me against proclaiming this rule, I still believe in true love and I still believe that butterflies in your stomach are a necessity. You need to have that base level of attraction. You need to be either physically attracted to the person, you need to be intellectually attracted to the person, and if you're a spiritually evolved person, you need to be spiritually attracted to the person. That base of attraction has to be there. When you meet the person for the first time, you have to get some butterflies in your stomach going. You know what? Even three, four years into a good relationship, sometimes you need those butterflies in your stomach. And keep in mind, this does happen to human beings. Maybe it's that person's voice. Maybe it's that person's ada. In Hindi, there's a word called ada. which basically translates to the little subtle movements you know the things they do the way they put their hair back the way they flare their nostrils when they're angry these little things when you break up with someone those are the things you miss because those were the things that got you charmed in the first place the way that person spoke the way that person smiled not just the looks not just the brains it's all a package deal that kind of churns up the butterflies in your stomach the second aspect of this friendship friendship is way more important than relationships romance and love if you begin very intensely if you begin romantically there's a chance that all that fire might burn out at some point but if your relationship is built on the basis of friendship that's the true test for a relationship a great life hack is to be able to see how well you gel with that person's friends if you get along with their friends you'll probably end up in a long term relationship with that person because see When you're attracted to someone, it's a combination of lust, love, and friendship. Eventually, lust fades. Sometimes, even love fades. What you're left with is friendships, and what relationships turn into are partnerships. According to me, that's why you need to be able to have that partnership with that person. And the test for partnership is that if you remove that element of attraction, who is this person that you love? you'll be able to know who that person is by knowing their friends because people vibe with others like themselves if you like their friends's company it's very likely that you're in a good long term relationship right now if you don't take a step back and gauge this situation see this isn't a golden rule this doesn't apply to everyone but most cases you need to see if you can gel with their friends third point Don't go out looking for perfection in relationships. Don't go out looking for the hundred percent perfect partner. No one's perfect. You're not perfect. You're probably never going to be perfect. At the most, you'll get an eight on ten or a nine on ten. This person might look gorgeous, but might have some major flaws, say in conversation. This person might be extremely intelligent, but may not be able to dress well, and that might be an important factor for you. This person may be smart and loving towards you. but doesn't really want to talk to your family now you've got to ask yourself that those two points that are missing if this person's an 8 on 10 those two points that are missing are they that crucial for you or can you bridge that gap through good communication this is where friendship comes in as a factor once again talk a lot to each other relationships are about accepting people for who they are but it's also about bridging gaps through a bit of compromise so be ready to compromise because you're not a 10 on 10 either you're probably an 8 on 10 point number 4 if you are in a serious relationship or you want to develop a serious relationship with someone exchange ideas about your long term goals where do you see yourself when you're 50 years old not professionally where do you see yourself is it a big house in europe in some orchard is it a small flat in mumbai or delhi where you just want your coziness where you just want maybe a dog maybe a kid is it somewhere on a beach in goa and then you've got to ask that person these questions where do they see themselves if you really love them ask yourself if you can put yourself within their dreams discuss your long term visions because that needs to match and when that does that's what creates magic in the most symbiotic relationships i'm dead sure bill gates and melinda gates spoke about this at some point they exchanged ideas i'm dead sure barack obama and michelle obama exchanged ideas about their long term visions your visions got to match your ambitions have to match what you want from life in terms of kids pets the way you want your life to be 
your daily cycles, what time you want to wake up, things like that, little things like that matter in the long term. And the fifth and final rule, have a life outside of them. I've repeated this point through the course of this podcast, but that's the one big learning of my life till this point. They cannot be the center of your world. Your career, your own family, your own parents, your pets, eventually your children are a part of your world. None of these aspects are your entire world and your relationship also fits into your world in the same way. The best relationships help you grow. They bring out the best in you. They help you learn a lot about life. They support you in your dark times, but they're still just a part of your life. Remember that love is the biggest motivation in the world. I was recently listening to a podcast by Tim Ferriss where he was interviewing the former Surgeon General of USA who has dealt with a lot of patients who were on their deathbed. And his one learning of life was that when people are dying, they don't talk about their career, they don't talk about the Instagram following, they don't even talk about the amount of money they have in the bank. They talk about the relationships that were the highlights of their life. The people who invoked a feeling of love inside them. That's what you remember when you're dying. Love is the biggest motivation behind everything we do. We want to become rich to give to the ones around us, not just to feel a sense of power ourselves. That's not how human nature is built. Human nature is all about socializing, giving to others. And that's why I strongly believe that relationships are definitely just a part of your life, but don't stop believing in love at the same time. When you're loving, Love with an open heart, but love with all these learnings as a part of your subconscious mind.